Hello YouTube and welcome back to my second vlog. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who watched my first one and gave me uh, good advice, comments of what to improve, what they like. So I pre appreciate very much for all your comments. So for today's vlog, we're playing at one, two stakes and we're going to analyze around six hand. So let's get into it. So let's start the first hand with King Queen offsuit. The undergun limps, undergun plus two limps as well. So I'm with King Queen at the bottom and I will raise because there's too many limpers in this hand. The big blind calls and the other gun calls as well and the other gun plus two folds. So the flop is a 8-6 king with two clubs. The big blind checks, undergun checks as well. So here with a pair and a decent kicker, there's a possibility of fallout draw, possibly of stray. Since we're multi-ways and people tend to see to run a lot, so I'm going to do a c-bet of $20. The big blind calls and the other gun folds. The turn is an 8 of diamond. The big blind checks. So here with my pair, now improving to a two pair, but not really. I uh, need some more information because the big line check called when I bet on the flop. So would he have done that with the second pair? It's a possibility in those games, but I need to find out what he has. So I need to bet. So if he would raise here, it's a possibility that he has another A. But I'm putting him more on a flush or a straight draw. So with that in mind, I've put a bet of $40 and he calls as well. The river is an 8 of heart. Not a big blind checks. I'm having a full house here, so since I'm the last to talk, I cannot just check back and be scared of what he had. A pair of aces behind these cards? No way at all. So I want to grow that pot, and so I put a third of a pot, $50. So here, if he would have had a quads, he would re-raise me. But since he folds, I'm pretty sure he had a straight draw or a flush draw. So for my second hand, we look at the beautiful ladies so with my position on the gun we put a bet of ten dollars the iron gun plus one calls under gun plus two calls as well and the small blind calls so way too many people to see a flop which is jack four seven rainbow here i'm feeling more comfortable because i've dodged a king or an ace which is not unreasonable when people a lot of people come in pre-flop so here, having an over pair, small blind checks, and I continue to put a C bet of half pot, $25. The undergun plus one falls, and the undergun plus two calls. So the turn is seven of spades. It doesn't really change a lot of things, because what would the undergun plus two represent? A seven in his hand? Not really sure. Anyway, with my over pair, simple thing to do. I want to avoid a king or an ace on the river. So I've continued to put a bet of $50 and the undergun plus two calls. So the river is a six of diamonds. So here the straight can be inside, but with what? Five, eight, five, three. So he would have a gutter with the turn and flop. So with that in mind, it's a possibility that in the low stakes, they, they tend to run with a gutter, a simple gutter. So it would be not unreasonable to think that he had that. Or he could have a full house as well. So pocket fours, seven, six. But the only one I would find out if I bet and he would re-raise me. Uh, so with that in mind, I only think he might have a pair of jack here. And I'm tar targeting his pair of jacks. So I want to bet a 65 and the... Undergun plus two calls and show that he has ace jack. I didn't know why he showed it before me. But with my queens, I'm good and I win a pot. And also here to get the max value of a pair, he could have checked back with he had a jack because he had showdown value. So I want to make sure to have the max value. So here I think the best reasonable play is to put a bet at the river. So here for my third hand, I'm having a six four of diamond, a suited gapper in the cutoff position. The Argon Plus 2 put a bet of $12, and since I like to play these kinds of hands, I've called the $12 and the Argon Gun Plus 1 calls as well. The flop is 6, Queen, and 4, Rainbow. La! I'm having two pairs. And now the Argon Gun Plus 2 
continue to put a bet of $20. Since I'm having a two pair here, really small pairs, and there's not really much of a wet board. So I just want to call since I'm having the position here. So I call his bet and the Argon plus one folds. And let's see your turn, which is the eight of heart. Now there's a possibility of a straight with seven five. The Argon plus two put a bet of $60, which he's showing a lot of strength. So I'm thinking he might have an overpair aces, kings, or he might have queen with a top clicker, with a queen, ace queen. With all that in mind, and I'm pretty sure the river could be a scary card. So I'm trying to think what can I do here? And I probably wanted to do a river jam. So I want to build the pot higher. So with my two pair, I've re-raised him to $140. And now the undergun plus two, thanks, and decided to fold. So for my next hand, I'm having king queen offsuit in the other gun plus two position. So I've raised it up at $12 and only the hijack calls. The flops turn out to be a king of heart, 10 of heart and a queen of club. So since I'm having two pair and it's a pretty wet board with flush draws, straight draws. So I've decided to put a bet of 50, $15. And the hijack shove all in with only having a hundred dollars. So with two pair and there's a lot of possibility he might run. So I just make the calls and the turn is a four of spades and a seven of club. The villain shows king and six of diamonds. So pretty much he had not a lot of strength, but that's what it is in the one, two games. So for my next hand, I'm having king jack offsuit in the hijack position. There's a straddle at five, the undergun plus two limbs, the low jack limbs. So here there's a, too much limper and I still have the position. So I've re-raised at $20. And the straddle folds, the undergun plus two calls, and the low jack folds. So the flop is nine, three, eight, two clubs. The undergun plus two checks. And since I'm the aggressor in this hand, I've decided to put a bet of $15 because I'm not having any pair, but still I'm having a possibility of a backdoor flush and a backdoor trick. And since I'm having two over card, I might hit a pair as well afterwards. And since the undergun plus two then just limps in pre-flop, so he isn't showing a lot of strength here. But anyway, I bet my $15 and he got. The turn is a five of heart. Now there's a possibility of straight as well, seven, six, but the Anagon plus two decided to checks. So here, what do I want to represent? I might want to represent a higher pair. So I might have like Jack, Queen, Kings, Aces. And with all that in mind, I decided to go with a, my gut and decided to put a bet of $35 here to represent that I'm having a higher pair and continue my aggressiveness. And the undergun plus two calls. The river is a king of heart. Now there is a possibility of a flush, but that would be a backdoor flush. And would he have that? It's unlikely. The undergun plus two checks. So with now I'm having my king and I still want to like domestify my hand so he doesn't really know what I have. I didn't want just to make a check here but there's a possibility to check but i don't think it's the right play here because seven six i think he would have bet and anyway if he had seven six he would re-raise me in the turn because there was too much of a flush draw with the clubs and the heart so with all in mind and i'm having a pair i decided to bet 35 dollars which was really low because i wanted him to target pair and with all that in mind, he decided to fold. So for my last hand, I have King Jack suited in the undergun plus two position. There's a straddle. And since we're late at night, people tend to see to call higher bets, preflops are insane. So anyway, so I decided to put a bet of $20 and the only D straddler calls. Here the flop is King 3-7 Rainbow. 
the straddle checks and I wanted to play a mystery hand so I didn't want to represent a king so I decided to check here but I don't think it's the right play because a straddle could have a lot of random hands and want to defend his straddle so he might his range might be way looser so I think the safer thing here play would be to actually bet my king because even though if I didn't have a king it would be a perfect flop to actually see bet here with a king so with all that in mind I tried to play to play a tricky hand here so I decided to check the turn is a four of heart now the straddle decided to leave for twenty dollars here I'm in a weird position because I cannot really re-raise because what would I represent five six two pairs but I think the straddle has way more often two pairs on this board than I have. So I just decided to make the call and see a river, which was a 10 of diamond. The straddle continued his story and decided to put a bet of $30. And like the turn, I couldn't really re-raise here because what would I sh shown? Two pairs here? Uh, anyway, I decided to just decided to make a call and the straddle mucks, so he tried to bluff me, and that's it. My last hand, I don't think I played it correctly, because since I'm the aggressor, I should have bet or c-bet my king here, because it's more in my range than the straddler. The straddler mostly gonna have loose hands and want to protect his straddle, so he's gonna call loosely. So he might catch a second pair or something else on the turn in the river, so that's why you wanna build up the pot faster with even though you have actually a king as well but I wanted to play a sneaky hand with him so that's why I checked and sometimes you get results with bad plays and sometimes with your right moves you get bad results but you shouldn't keep that in mind and you should always tend to do the right choice even though you have you got aces pre-flop and someone calls you made the right move even though you go all in you're at 80% favor at top and you might lose those two out of ten but you shouldn't be sad from a bad result getting unlucky because you made the right choice and that's what happened in life that you're gonna make all the right choice and you might think that oh man poker gods are against me or the gods are against me or something else is against me but you got to navigate through those highs and lows and not make them your primary concern because if you put too much thought and focus yourself on these bad situations, you might make bad moves after that. And you got to be self-aware if you're playing good or if you're playing bad because it's not on how you're good at winning, but it's more on how good you are when you're losing. And that makes all the difference between a pro and an amateur. So on behalf of that, um, this session I've won uh, $730, it's a good session and I hope to see you on the next vlog.